Hello, my people. Welcome to another day of stories. I hope you guys had a fantastic week. If you've been watching the channel the last couple of weeks, we have been discussing the wonderfulness of my childhood stories. Please. Okay, well, that happened. Today's story is no different, a flashback from the past. Next week, we'll bring in a wee bit more modern story, but today, let's take it back old school. Before we get going, if this is your first time here, please click the subscribe button, then click the thumbs up because thumbs up is thumbs up and everybody at this channel likes the thumbs up. Also ring that bell Quasimodo style, that way you always know when there's a new video. And with that all said, let's tell a story. What I believe the predecessor to Nerf guns really is, and when I say Nerf guns, I mean the really good ones, not the goofy, janky ones that we had way back in the day. They were just terrible. Nerf guns were not amazing when I was a kid. What was amazing was, what what we called spinner guns. I think they were also referred to as disc guns. I don't know if they had other names, but we called them spinner guns and they shot these little plastic discs. I imagine that we got rid of them because they were hard plastic. So if you chewed on them, you'd choke. But who? why do you chew on plastic? Don't chew on plastic. That's a dink move. Parents don't let your kids chew on plastic. Well, there's a simple solution. If you got shot in the eye, that'd be bad. You should always wear safety glasses anyway, but okay. That coupled with the fact that we try to overprotect everything there is to protect in the culture nowadays, that's, that's what, that's what happened. So the death of spinner guns took place. But before that, man, they were fun. What we did was we got the awesome spinner guns that would hold 20 spinners, 20 of them. They had good springs, good triggers. They fired straight and true and they flew the way you want them to. And you could actually aim with them and they were awesome. And we would play hide and go seek. We'd play tag. We'd play just all out war. We played spinner guns all the time with my dad. There was this one time where it was me and my brother and we were fighting my dad. He was posted up at the end of the hall and he shot my brother because my brother was just a little tiny gamer and he walked out there and just got bang just right out of the gate and instead of holding true to us to our to our plight to our fight that we were going for he totally started supplying my father with the for the spinner with spinners dad said nate i need more spinners and nate ran down the hall ran down over to where all the spinners were going he picks them up and instead of giving me any he just runs them all over to dad and i thought that was the most unfair most awful thing i'd ever seen ever the betrayal see i told you it was always his fault now this plagued me forever. It just, it bothered me so much that this happened. Right up until the time when I was having a Nerf war with my own two children. I am not even remotely sad to say that my tiny daughter, she was really small when we first started having Nerf wars and I smoked her right out of the gate. Just boom, done. Welcome to the battlefield, my love. But I ran out of bullets quickly shooting after my son and I looked at her and I said, babe, I need ammo. And she brought it at the great protest of her brother. Ah! I guess that's just the dad power. <laughs> Good times. We engaged in spinner gun fights everywhere we went. We had multiple of them. We went, to, they were at Albertsons. They were at Albertsons in the toy section. That's where we got them. It was fantastic. This tiny little toy section and here was this golden gem of a gun. I saw one recently and it was a, it was soft. It was like big old soft foam spinners. What a waste. Blah. Blech. One day we're playing hide and go seek and my dad is it and we have to go hide. Now we didn't have a very large house. If I remember, I want to say it was two bedrooms, two baths, galley style kitchen. I don't know what else it had. I, can't. I think it was a duplex actually, now that I think about it. My dad is in the living room counting. I go and I post up under this old antique table they had, folded down and I was underneath the table. My brother decided to go into the laundry room, which just so happened to be at the end of the kitchen. It was galley style kitchen and then laundry room at the end of that. And you open the door, dryer on the left, washer on the right, and there was space in there for you to turn around. It was That was it though, that was as deep as it was. I hear my dad get done counting and he starts to walk towards the kitchen because the back side of the house is the only place we could hide. He stops right at the edge of the counter where the dining room and the kitchen start and I think I've been made right there. Oh no, beads of sweat pouring down, worry about how I'm gonna fight my way through this battle. But no, as I peek around the little edge, my father is actually staring at the laundry room. My brother was a tiny human and scared of the dark. So when he went into the laundry room, he turned the light on. The other thing that gave it away Way was that the cord to the telephone was stuck in the door. So someone's in there. 
obviously. Now, for those of you who are younger than 25, you probably don't know anything about phones connected to walls with cords. And I know that seems ancient and like it's something that goes in offices, but that used to be the way that every person's phone was. You may or may not have a really long cord so that you can walk away from where the phone is located. In our case, the phone in the kitchen had about a 10 foot cord on it. And that's as far as you were going away from that kitchen wall. My father, knowing that neither of us have the patience to outweigh him in this game, kneels down and draws his gun down on the laundry room door. I recognize in a moment of brilliance and opportunity, my dad has no idea that I'm there and I can save the day and save my little brother. Never mind the fact that he betrayed me as a mobile ammo depot earlier. I can win the game and I can, I can stop my brother from getting shot. Dad takes aim and my brother, sure enough, starts to open the door and he tenses and right as he's about to fire at Nate, I hit my dad right in the shoulder. And as soon as he heard the click, he turned and saw the spinner and it hit him because they flew with remarkable speed. And he just went, ah! It was the most wonderful victory that I had ever experienced. I rejoiced, I danced, I, I, was, I was singing my praises and my dad just had this awesome grin on his face. Just like, wow, that was really good. You totally got me. Then fast forward 25 years and I realized that I myself have that grin. Whenever my kids do something like that and I'm just like oh man that was so awesome that was so cool oh like when my son runs and jumps and does a little matrix move and shoots me right between the eyes with a nerf ball or when my daughter is hiding in a closet suspended above me that is definitely one of my most favorite things about being a dad and I look forward to having that experience more and more as they continue to grow and flourish in awesomeness I hope you guys have the most fantastic week I will see you next Friday in the meantime keep telling stories